Okay. And now we're going to move on to uh, transportation. Uh, and I'd like to introduce uh, Laurie Radow, who uh, is uh, going to talk about traffic and emergency management and uh, give us all sorts of useful information. Um. Good, af good afternoon. Um, so my ground view is probably not as exciting as, as Deb's, but we're the ones who got you there and back. I, um, I was with the Federal Highway Administration for 20 years, and for the last 10 or 12 years, I retired in 2016, and um, as I was retiring, someone called me up and asked, um, uh, what about this eclipse? And I went, what eclipse? And I wrote a fact sheet, called people at NASA, and asked for help, and I ended up at the 2017 Columbia, South Carolina um, workshop, and that's how I got involved in this. Um, so I'll offer up some observations um, from uh, my work at Federal Highway and Planned Special Events, and I also, on the other, but the other things I did were um, evacuations and emergencies. And you may think these are two separate, but when you think about it, moving people in planned events and will help you prepare them for, not, for unexpected disasters. And I also served with Bob Bear as co-chair of the um, local planning um, working group. So I have some observations. And um, what I, first of all, I want to thank um, the AAS um, and Angela and Rick because, and Deb, so there is no prototype for a nationwide event. These do not happen. And so, and the, you do not want the federal government to manage your events, but you have a lot of capabilities. I, and there are special events that I'll get to that the federal government does have a role in, and they are for very specific reasons. But you know your community. You have great talent at your state and local public and county agencies. I'll walk through some of the things that will, if you don't know about them now, because you will have many other events between now and 2044. Um, what um, my observation is from being on the co-chair in the local planning group was we had people who were event managers who knew nothing about eclipses. We had people who were um, from the emergency management world who knew how to handle disasters, but plan special events, they know them. They do the 4th of July, the state fair, but this was a little bit different. So a real range of capabilities, which tells me and tells all of us, no one person, no one agency knows everything. That's why Deb made gr um, good use of a broad base of um, expertise throughout her, um, um, her locality. So if you didn't tap your DOTs, you may, did it, you may have done it because you don't know what DOTs have to offer. Um, and I'll give it the perspective from what you know as a traveler. Every time you see a traffic reporter giving a report on how the roads are doing and you see those cameras, those aren't from your local TV station. Those are from your, most states have traffic management centers. And all those um, sensors in the roads feed into the um, operation centers and um, their bank of cameras. The better ones, I shouldn't say the better ones, the, they've matured over time and they're co-located with their 911 call centers with police and others, so the ability to respond quickly. Um, and um, the other is the state DOT is often the largest state agency. They've got an awful lot of resources for you to tap, to tap into. They are not gonna manage all of the roads. It's often the county has by miles more roads, but it's the interstate that are the most often traveled. Um, I have to say, um, when 2017 happened, I talked to a lot of uh, state emergency, DOT emergency managers, and they said, Lori, it's for five minutes. We know storms, we know how to handle it. So it's educating them, um, and that's part of, um, of educating everyone. And I, and I, I, we did a, two um, sessions at the Transportation Research Board, of which I've been a member for about, I don't know how many years, but it is the transportation arm of the National Academy of Sciences. And we did two sessions on the eclipse in 2018, and that's how a lot of people became more aware of after actions and uh, what they needed to do. 
this is some of the things we learned from 2017 um, and incorporated into 2018. And all of the emergency managers for the 14 states in 2017 developed a task force. And the message that they came up with was, get there early, stay put, leave late. You know, two out of three ain't bad. In this instance, not always good. Uh, you want to get all three because um, you may be the best driver in the world, but you don't know the person next to you. Transportation is dynamic. And with a lot of people coming from out of state, they don't know the roads, they may make bad decisions. They may have someone who's sick in the, um, in the car and they just forget everything else and want to get to wherever they need to go. So you, you just have to know that you aren't the only one on the road. And when, um, when there's a long line, the possibility of secondary crashes is more likely to occur. And it, when you have a long queue, it's harder for the responders to get there. So there's lots of things that, um, as an individual, it's one person, not a problem. Hundreds of people, thousands of people, hundreds of cars, and they don't know where they're going. Um, that becomes um, just more problematic. Um, there is also, I guess, a quick, uh, these are some upcoming events. And um, some of them will involve you, some of them don't. And when I was talking about which ones the federal government's involved in, all but probably the Major League Baseball is what's called National Special Security Event, National, Secu National Security Special Events. And that's when major dignitaries show up, it's particularly what we'll see for the um, NATO summit um, when they did it in 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I guess for the 50th, um, 25 years ago. Um, the, half of Washington was blocked off. So that will become much, and that's not, you don't want that for your city for an event like this. You want your, it to be as accessible as possible. Um, but you'll see as word comes out more about the uh, 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, you may be called or invited to participate in that. Um, some things about what we've collected. Uh, slowly but surely, information's coming out. The Purdue study is on goods movement, and that's something that you probably don't think about when you have your event, is that goods still need to move. We are a country where we have about three days of goods, um, we are three of inventory, so if goods are stopped, you're not gonna get your orange juice tomorrow. And that's, um, that's one, um, Purdue did that. The Niagara International Transportation Technology Coalition has also put out a report, it's available, um, I have to say, I, this is, these are preliminary as far as I can tell. Uh, I was told by the folks at the New York State DOT, no, actually the Division Office of Federal Highway in New York, because of a crash, there was a long delay, there was a long backup, and my question to them was, did the long delay happen because there was a crash? And they didn't get back to me, but crashes have people who don't know where they're going make a bad turn, so I didn't get an answer to that. Some other information that's been collected, the Federal Highway Administration actually produced a very good fact sheet, um, somewhat based on what I did in 2016, but they produced that in uh, 2022, and they had a, a webinar in, in January, February, um, February or March of this year. They had a workshop at the middle of March, and so they're taking all that information, gathering the information from the states under the path, and we'll put that together and expect that report next year. So that may be something of worth. I was, John, John Obernberger was the first federal highway plan special events manager. I was the second and last. I, they did away with the program, and I think because of the eclipse and of interest, they are gonna start it up again. And there's a wealth of information, and they are realizing um, that it's not the person who manages, who's, uh, who's gonna manage it, or whose team it will be is a weather, does weather. Weather's critical. I came from the emergency management side. Uh, so as you prepare for your next events, and if you're from the um, plan special event side or the um, tourism department, then you know that you have a whole calendar. And these are some of the things that you can tap into. Mostly these are designed for transportation people, but you can, um, the plan special events assessment tool, you can bring together the people that you need to uh, 
who will be your partners and sort of test, test see how you're doing. These are a lot of publications. I always want to leave people with resources because you don't, if you don't know that they exist, you don't know where to go. The work's been done. Your state DOTs, they may not know about it. Or your division offices um, make you, bring, the, bring it to them. And I can tell you from my world of transportation, they are more than willing to help. So if you want a tour of your TMC take, and say it's for professional reasons, we're going to have a major event, I think they'd be more than happy to show it show them to you, show the TMC. So that's it. Um, I will post it because I was, I was told I had to talk fast. <laughs> I'm gonna stay here. Okay, any questions for, for Laurie? No, wait. wait. I might have a question. Um, so, you know, one of the things here you're talking about is, you know, being able to leverage this now, but we do have a couple of decades before this is going to be an issue for, for us. Are there things that are going to be uh, useful that will go to, say, Australia, which is going to have a whole bunch between now and when we get another one? So the driver today doesn't know how much transportation has changed in the past 10, 15 or 20 years. As you drive, you see those variable message lines. Remember I was telling you about all those sensors in the road? So all in a TMC, they will change those messages. They won't tell you it's raining because they don't want to distract you. But So there's been a lot of technology that has been put into place because the whole point of after building the 42, 45,000 miles of, of roadway, we knew how to figure out how to operate it better. And we want to provide to the, tri to the traveler reliability and safety. I can't tell you what's happening in the next 20 years. There will be a lot more. But um, what I can't, he here's for those of you who are dying to buy an EV, it's much more difficult to extract someone from an EV after a crash. So those are the things, while there's the marketplace, there are safety issues. And so I don't know how much longer it would take if there are many more EVs on the car in the road. So, and what will be happening in, with regards to transportation with the specifics of eclipses, no public agency will design something for one purpose. Everything that we do has to, you know, what we did for uh, disasters, we can use for planned special events. What we do for traffic incident management, we can do it for emergency management. So. It will be how can you work with your public agencies to take what is already in place and adjust it um, for the event. But that, and that is sitting down and explaining to the public agencies, here's our specifics based on what you have, can, how can we adjust? But that's, I, I wouldn't even venture to tell you what the technology is going to be in three years. It has, it has changed so rapidly and will continue to do so because we, Australia, Europe, very mobile people. And so that's, that's the, it's very hard. Um, so. As the owner of two electric vehicles, I'm now going to have to figure out how the hell you get out of them. <laughs> 